Hey guys, sorry I'm late. I'm always late, aren't I? Uh, that's my that's my fault. Uh, I got caught up trying to figure something out for you guys so that I didn't annoy you while we're live. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be jumping inside of Unity and we're going to be taking a look at how to do exterior levels, but kind of maintaining that grid feel that the interior levels have. We're also going to do a massive brainstorming session. Session. One of my fortes is artwork and ambience and mood and story. Something that I'm not great at is coming up with really unique gameplay hooks. And so I figured I'd ask you guys if you had any ideas for a few hooks that we need to put into this game. So this is going to be a really fun day. We're going to do some just modeling and making something look beautiful, a carnival level, but also just brainstorming some really cool gameplay mechanics. So I'm really, really excited to hang out with you guys today. And I did want to say a huge thank you to Derek, Tim Crop, and Omar S. Guys, if you're in the chat, I just want to say hello and welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, you're supporting Father's Development by becoming a new student at Full Time Game Dev. Uh, but more importantly, you guys are supporting your own careers, which is really, really cool. And by the way, I did want to let you guys know, this is the last week we're doing this, okay? This is the last week. It's going to end on Friday. Today, there are two promo codes available. Um, they are below. So... Two of you can join full-time game dev. Two seats are available. You're going to get 50% off full-time game dev. You're also going to get 2D Art Pro, which is my 2D program on 2D art, how to make beautiful 2D art. Also a program called Stream My Game, which is how to get streamers to play your game. I've actually figured this out, at least on my end, on how to get streamers to play my games. Um, I got Jacksepticeye, PewDiePie, MatPat to play my games, the Game Grumps. And also, on top of all of this, all these free courses, 50% off, you're also going to get a pretty sweet t-shirt. I actually really like this t-shirt. It's awesome. So if you guys want to check out uh, the discounts below, be sure to do that. 15 years of making games, I teach all of this in my course. How you can go full-time. It's a massive program. And by the way, if you're a student, let us know in the chat. And I'm going to see you on the other side of this intro. I will say hello to my students, but also say hello to, well, subscribers. Can't wait to hang out, guys. I'll see you on the other side. By the way, guys, feel free to download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free. It's my treat to you. I used this exact 2D game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and then I got to play it in front of his subscribers, which was really awesome. Um, so download that. Use it however you want. It's my treat to you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so really quick, what I want to show you guys is our interior here. Okay, so this is something that Felipe's been working on. Um, I laid out the map and it's disabled currently, but I laid out the map. I'm the art director, I'm the story guy, I'm the character guy, I'm the code guy, I'm the concept artist, I'm the, well, like I said, art director. So I say, this is what I want it to feel like, and then Felipe goes in and he models the assets, and he's done a freaking incredible job creating what we've got here. So I'm gonna hit play just to show you guys what we have currently. And this is gonna be relevant to our discussion, to our brainstorming session, um, later on today, okay? In this stream, we're gonna jump back into this scene and we're gonna talk about how to make this into a hook, okay? We can make a game, right? Just a regular first person shooter game where you go up a hotel, right? Creepy zombies, really cool themes, really cool story. We could do that, but we can also throw in some hooks, okay? So we're gonna talk about those hooks and hopefully brainstorm some pretty cool ones. But he's done an incredible job here really really cool okay and one of my favorite parts that i didn't show yesterday is this sweet elevator so this is going to take us to the next level okay and you'll be able to plug in the numbers to go to the next level so he's done an incredible job now the, the struggle we have here is we need to incorporate this feeling this this grid sort of feel because everything's based on a grid we have to incorporate that into level one okay so let's jump, <coughs> excuse me, let's let's jump on over to level one here. And the reason I was late is because I'm working on this very simple, it's a super simple path system that takes us to the exterior carnival level, okay? 
And this, I gotta admit, is a pain in the butt, all right? But, I decided that, hey, I'm gonna get this done, the majority of this path system done, before we jump into the stream, okay? So essentially what we're gonna do here is have a path system. The way that I like to think of this is, the terrain system should, not, the, the terrain that we're gonna create, we're gonna use the terrain tool, it's not going to dictate the path. The path is going to dictate the terrain because really we're not even walking on the terrain. The terrain is just there to be pretty, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and lay out our gates so that we can lock the player in. Once we do this, we can go ahead and create some terrain, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just start putting in our gates to lock the player in. These are gonna be static objects. They are currently static objects, all right? And so what that means is we'll be able to bake the lighting onto these gates, okay? And they'll also be able to uh, have occlusion culling. Occlusion culling is when they cull out of the camera when you're turned away from them so they're not always rendering, right? Let's also make sure that the box collider here is correct. If we just go to reset right here, it's gonna set its size properly, okay? See that? All right, and regarding the previous level, what we're gonna do with the lighting, just FYI, is we're actually gonna dim it down a lot. So we're just gonna bring the lighting down super dim so that it's really creepy in there. Um, hey Chris, how you doing, buddy? Guys, let's say hello to Chris Palazos, good friend of mine, great musician, wrote some tracks for father. We're currently in this brainstorming phase, so we're not really sure exactly what we want the music to feel like. But Chris, welcome, buddy. Okay, I'm gonna copy these over, and we're gonna add some pillars as well. But if you hold V and then grab a vertex here, you can just sort of snap it into place. Now, it's gonna we're breaking some rules here, and I say we, I mean me. I'm breaking some rules here. Um, basically, we're having some collision here, and that's because at the end of the day, I don't really know the solution. So we're gonna put a pillar over top of this, okay? All right, so that looks great. I'm gonna copy these four, and then we can just bring them over here and put them right here. There we go. All right, so we need to go back to our poly mesh or poly shape. We're gonna to go to top view here. We just need to make sure that this is correct here. So. If I pull this over, it needs to be in 16, I believe. So we need to come over like that. Yeah, yeah, maybe one over. Let's double check. One more set, there we go. Grab these, we can pull them over. There we go. All right, that should do. Okay, that should do. And then we bring these stairs over and snap them right into place. Everything's nice and snappy, okay? All right, good, good, good. Let's bring these over here. Again, hold V, grab a corner, and just snap it on in. There we go, see? And then one more, and this is gonna take us to the entrance of the park, okay? Because we're doing like a theme park, okay? Good, good, good. Looks good to me. I think we wanna do right here is just grab these here and then pull it over one and then we're good to go. Awesome. Okay, right over here, we're just gonna close it in for now. I'm not sure what's gonna be over here. I wanna do something like Disney World where there's like a, a boat system, but I also don't want to spend too much time on the boat system, like a ferry basically. Has anybody been to Disney World? You know, when you, you could take the ferry to Magic Kingdom. I kind of want to have something like that. But for now, all we're gonna do is take this here, grab all this stuff here, and then pull over one more. It's not really snapping to the grid system and I don't know why, but I know that we're okay. Okay, it looks like we're sort of off the grid system, which is fine because we just need to pull it over. So I'm gonna grab the entire thing here. Grab the entire thing. There we go, and then just 
push it snug on over. I believe we're off the grid system. If I can go to this mode here and hold control. Yeah, okay. So we're off this, the grid. That's crazy. I don't know why we're off the grid, but that's what happens sometimes. Um, what I'm going to do is grab one of the corners here and pull it to the, look, 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 it's not even doing it. I believe it needs to be negative 28, zero, and the negative, what's, what's, um, is, is 192 divided, divisible by four? Probably not, right? Um, 192 divided by, uh, I'm not so sure, 192 divided by four. We're using a grid size of four. Yeah, it is. So 192 is what we want to do here. Negative 192. And actually, it would be, let's see, let's double check. That's crazy. It's, for some reason, our grid system is off. I don't know why. No idea why. I'm not going to worry about it right now because I know that it was fine. I know that it was fine. I'm not going to worry about it during my live stream and embarrass myself. So our grid is off, and I don't know why. Um, that's OK <laughs> for now. All right, let's jump back into Unity here. OK, so let's go ahead and just throw some brick on here. And actually, we need to close these in. OK, so we're going to close them in. Grab these two, close it in, just like that. And we'll take these here. And I believe we should be good to be able to close these in like this. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. We're going to take a look here and see. All right, very good. And then one over here, center it up, right it right there. Yeah, yeah, good. OK, so we're going to bring this over just a little bit right here. Just bring this over. And I'm going to figure out what's going on with the grid after the live stream so I don't bore you guys. Fortunately, we created the entire thing in a grid, so I'm not too worried about what happened. Because I know we're we're still in a grid, it's just not, it's not it's not lined up properly, but we're okay. Um, okay, so this is great. We got ourselves an entrance here, and it's going to look really pretty because we can actually just change all the textures here. So we can grab all the floor ones. Actually, let's just grab them all, and let's just drag in the tile. Right, we have this stone tile material. There it is. Just drag it in there, and then we're going to go to our UV. So just go to the UV editor and hit four because we're in a grid size of four. So now all of our textures are proper. See that? Now I could select this edge loop here or this face uh, face ring. And then I could also select this face loop, no ring. Yeah, we're gonna, yep, there we go. And then we could, we could decide, you know, what do we wanna do here? I'm thinking what I wanna do is a brick, okay? So we're gonna go to our brick texture here. And we don't use this one often in the game because it's not really Art Deco. But we're going to do that. There we go. And what we might want to do is grab this face ring. I'm going to select this little arrow thing here. And now what I can do is position it just ever so slightly so that it's perfect. OK, I'm going to turn off snapping. There we go. And we could even rotate it by 90. Is that going to solve our problem? Maybe. We can take a look here. How about 180? <laughs> what about 45? Something's wrong here. Um, OK. There it is. There it is. OK. <laughs> so we probably want to bring this on a select face ring. There we go. And then I'm going to turn this off here. And if I pull this down by one, yeah, there we go. And then I can select this again. And then just clean it up, OK? There we go. Look at that. Nice and clean, right? Nice and clean. Now the top one, not so much. So we're going to we're going to change the UV for this. There we go. Um, do we need to change it to like 90 or something? It's fine. It's not the best thing ever, but uh, what we might need to do is flip them each each one, right? So like this over here, flip that by 0, right? Um, but I'm not going to do it during the live stream. Okay, 
because I don't want to bore you guys. But hopefully you get the idea here. So if we hit play here, this is kind of what it's going to feel like. It's going to feel, well, <laughs> more realistic. Okay, I need to bring those all of these gates down because we shifted it down a little bit. But this is what it's going to look like. Okay? Pretty cool. All right, so let's go ahead and just grab all the gates. So I can just type in the name here. Um, not that one, just that right there, and then grab them all and then bring them down by one. We also have the angled ones here, so we'll grab the angled ones. Good, and by the way, those of you just joining us, just remember that uh, you can get my program full-time game dev 50% off today, and you're also gonna get, and this does end at the end of the week, um, you're also gonna get my other courses, my 2D course and my course on how to reach out to streamers. You're gonna get those totally free. And then also my free course, Easy 3D, is included with that and a free t-shirt, so be sure to check it out. And feel free to say hello, guys, in the chat if you are a student. Okay, so that looks good, right? Everything's good here. I'm not going to panic too much about anything else, okay? This is really what we want um, for now. What we can do is we can create a new terrain. <laughs> and um, the way that we're gonna do that is we're actually gonna go to our terrain folder all the way down here. We're gonna duplicate an old terrain, okay? Here we go. There it is. So we have this level one terrain. I can actually just drag this in because why not, you know? And we're gonna flatten it, okay? So if I set this to negative 500, and then negative 500 in the Z, should position us right where we wanna be. And I'm gonna flatten this terrain. Just set it to zero, flatten tile, look at that. Nice and snug, see that guys? And so what this allows us to do is I can actually now raise the terrain. Remember, the terrain is not dictated the, the terrain does not dictate our floor here, okay? The architecture is set. The terrain is just a flourish, okay? That's what I've decided I wanna do. And that took me a while, probably a year to figure out that I don't like using terrain. <sighs> I don't like to use it in a, I don't like to try and make it precise because it's, it's so hard to make terrain precise. So we're just not gonna do that here, okay? All right, so it's interfering currently. That's okay. So we're gonna go to negative five. Or we could even just set the height. Actually, let's do this. We could set it to negative 50, okay? And I'm gonna turn off the our little map here. Just disable that for now. So our terrain is set to negative 50. I'm gonna go ahead and set the grass just paint some grass here, okay? And hopefully you guys will see what I'm doing here. Basically what we're gonna do is punch up the terrain, okay? So that we can paint trees on it, we can paint bushes and grass on it as we're walking up this path, okay? Sean, to answer your question, you're asking about is it okay to progress through the course with a different version of Unity? Yes, it's totally fine, totally fine. That's not a problem at all. Okay, so the reason why we extended this down, guys, this ground is so that the, or this, the wall here, is so that we can bring the ground up, okay? So what I'm gonna do is just bring the ground up. So I'm just gonna raise it up probably Pretty smooth, honestly. I just wanna see how it's gonna look. That's a little much, isn't it? Let's turn off our gizmos, because I'm really struggling to see here. That's a little much. Okay, so we're just gonna punch it up here. Let's turn off our lighting, or our, uh, what am I saying? There we go. Yeah, just like that. So all we're doing here is just adding some terrain. So if I hit play here, you'll be able to see that we haven't changed anything um, in terms of what the player can move on, but now there's like hills next to us, okay? And that's gonna be cool because we could put trees on the hills. 
So we're going up this beautiful, almost an island. And we should probably add a directional light, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and add one. We don't usually use directional lights um, because most, like 99% of the game is interior. But we're gonna add a directional light here, just like that. Doesn't matter where it's positioned, honestly. We could just zero it out. Um, and then turn on our lighting here. And now you can see, and we're gonna do a very harsh angle. Yeah. Here we go. I'm gonna drop it down. Okay. Hit play, and let's take a look. All right. So now we can see pretty good. Awesome. So we'll have trees painted on the ground as we're going up, okay? So I just really wanted to see how that looks. Let's go ahead and move forward with creating, I'm gonna disable the terrain here. Let's go ahead and move forward with creating the floor, okay? For this huge theme park. Um, if I go to level one map, turn that on, you can kind of get an idea of how big this map is. It's not that big, okay? And I don't want it to be. I don't want it to be. I just want this to be the zone, the area, where this Tower of Terror is, right? So in my head, I'm thinking about Carowinds. I'm thinking about Six Flags. I'm thinking about Disney World, all the places I grew up, or at least went to as a child. And I'm incorporating that into our map here. So let's go ahead and turn on our snapping. We can do a new poly shape. And we should probably bring this back by one. Okay, so let's do that really quick. All this crap here, let's move it all back by one unit. Okay, there we go. All right, now we can go ahead and draw a new poly shape right here. It looks like our, our snapping system is off again. So we're gonna grab our level one art, our map, and I'm gonna pull it. it looks like it's uh, locked here. There we go. I'm just gonna pull it on up. Okay. I could probably do it right about here. There we go. That's what we wanna do. Okay, and we'll line up the, we'll line that up properly after we're done with the, the shape here. Okay. Jacob Herod says, I'm starting game dev at college, Thomas. That's awesome, dude. I'm happy for you. All right, let's start a new poly shape, okay? So we're gonna take this. We're gonna draw just this. All we want is this for now, okay? So the way that this is gonna work I know we need a rim. So we're actually gonna extrude by um, one up and then flip the normals, okay? This is weird. Flip the normals. Then I go inside of the object. It's, this is kind of a pain in the butt, but this is kind of the method I decided to do. I delete the face. There we go. So now we have this sort of bucket and this is gonna hold various elements. And the reason why we're doing a bucket shape is so that I can select all of them and then I can extrude the faces. And that way we have like this edge, okay? But it looks like we got an issue. What is the issue, Thomas? I think we just wanna extrude the rim here. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So when we wanna select the uh, the ring, and then extrude. Beep. And now we have this cool little uh, little ring here. And we can just bring it up. Okay. And I believe that its position is set properly because we're, we're, we're snapping by unit sizes of four. Okay. So that should be good right about there. And um, then what you want to do is you select this edge ring here and, uh, or the edge loop. If 
I select this edge loop here, uh, well, I'm gonna have to select it manually here. And then I hold shift and pull down. Again, we have a, another platform, right? So that's kind of what we're trying to do here. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, we want to cut this piece out, okay? So what we need to do is connect these uh, these faces here. I believe we can do this here. Connect edges, yeah. And then one here. And then we'll be able to cut them out. We'll need to connect these as well. So we'll need to go back in time here. Okay. So this one here. Can't select it for some reason. I wonder why. I think I know why. I think it's because on the inside here we have this other one, right? So that's really what's going on here. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm not going to worry about cutting that out. Let's just get it textured and laid out. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and bring in our tile, right? We have that tile texture. There we go. UV editor, go to four. There we go. So now we have our tile. And then we can also select these, right? And that's going to be our brick. And that's about it, guys. Nothing crazy. Um, we're going to just go to our material brick, drag it on in there, okay? There we go. And that's set up to the proper um, tile size. It's just that we, we're going to have to unwrap it properly, okay? All right. We could probably do, obviously, the same over here, make these brick. We're not going to see this back face here, but let's go ahead and uh, just bring in our brick wall. Okay, there we go. All right. So that should do. We could take this and we're going to keep it positioned nice and clean. If I, um, the next question is, no, I think we're good actually. I think we're good. I'm going to make sure I group all this together because I might want to be moving it. So I'm going to take all of this stuff here, all of that, and hopefully. Yeah, I can just group it all together. So this, all this stuff here, I'm going to press Control, control Shift G, and it puts it in the game object. We're going to call this path. Okay, I'm going to make sure I remove the spawn points from the path, though. We don't want those in there. All right, so there's our path. So if I wanted to, I could do it like this. This is not ideal, but I could just position it so that it's nice and clean. But I'm trying to figure out, I don't know what happened to the grid for this guy. But overall, I think we'll be okay. Yeah, we're okay. Yeah. yeah I'm not sure what happened. But this is, the, this is the general idea. Let's hit play and make sure the scaling is all right. Scale is like the most important thing to me. Um, yeah, so this is all ProBuilder. These are not ProBuilder, to answer your question. These are Blender, right? They're static objects. Um, and then we make our way up here, and then this is all ProBuilder, and this is ProBuilder as well, okay? Very cool. So I like this, it's pretty big. Not bad. And so what you could do, guys, is you can even inset the ground just to create some, some variation. I'm, not, I'm gonna just show you like you could do like this, and then you could hold shift and go down like that, right? And you could just create some variation, kind of like you might see on a Doom map. Um, but we're not gonna do that for now. We're just gonna lay out the basics, okay? Cutting these edges is gonna be a pain in the butt. I just know that, and that's, that's just what, I don't wanna do it during the live stream, honestly, because it's gonna be a pain. But overall, that's great. We'll add fencing along the edge here, right? Um, but we're not going to do that either. 
right now. We're just going to lay out maybe one more platform, okay? One more little platform. So in the case of this stream, what I want to do is let's go ahead and create a new poly shape. And I'm actually going to have it extend out a little bit more because I think it's weird that it's perfectly angled like that. So I'm going to do, and it's going to go up. It's going to go up. Um, this here, yep, yep. This here, this here. There's a nice little, nice little square. And what I mean by up is it's going to be elevated. But remember, let's extrude by one up. Flip the normals, right? Then we go into the object. And so this is something that I've found with Pro Builder is like, it's really good to know. Did I flip the normals? Come on, flip the normals, bud. Let's edit the poly shape. I thought I did. There we go. Um, it's really a good idea to definitely have a system in place of how you do things, right? Um, I'm still figuring out this sort of exterior, the way we're doing exteriors, because the way we're doing exteriors is a lot different than interiors. Um, but this will probably go up like that. Looks like it's nice and snapping in place. Good, good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what we'll do is bring it up one so that you can have a stair right here. Okay. Very good. Okay. Um, I'm going to take the edge ring or edge loop here or the, the the faces honestly select all of them and then extrude it out they're going to extrude inside okay and then i'm going to grab the edge loop edge ring looks like we can't and i'm going to extrude down Come on. Okay. Looks like we can't for some reason. There we go. So just extrude those down. So see how we're just creating, it's almost like a huge foundation for this huge, you know, hotel ride, Tower of Terror type ride. So we're creating this big foundation right, that you can sort of go up slowly and it'll be right here. The big hotel will be right here. So that's the idea. But we just have to figure out how to cut. <laughs> We're gonna have to figure out how to cut these edges off when we have like a stairwell. So if we go to our stairs here, I could show you, um, like for example, we grab this one here, paste it in there, and these are gonna be like right here. right in there. So that means this guy needs to go down by one. Actually, no, he should be good. Once we cut it, let's see here. No, we need to bring him down by one or like 0.25 or something. There we go. Um, it's not perfectly lined up because I believe, yeah, that's why these guys. Okay. Awesome. So it's coming together, definitely coming together. Pretty cool. Um, we'll have a big old fence around the edges here. Big old fence lining the edge. Or maybe we won't, you know, maybe we won't even have an edge. Maybe you can just look out into the ocean or something. Uh, but I'm just trying to get a good idea of scale here. Okay, good. So yeah, it what's funny is it seems small. But once you start laying everything out and creating elevation changes, it looks pretty good. Okay, let's drag in our brick wall. Make sure we set the UV editor to four. And then we're gonna set the tile here to our tile material. Um, there we go. Awesome. So hopefully you guys can see what we're going for here, right? Let's hit play and get a sense for the size. Okay, let's run on up there and take a look. Oh, 
about beautiful trees, right? And now, we just have to make sure it looks really pretty, right? We're gonna have to have lots of pretty terrain here, a garden of some kind. You make your way up. We're gonna cut holes in these edges here. So it's pretty big. And you'll have a huge hotel up here, so we'll make our way up over here, around, and to the hotel. So it's gonna be pretty big, pretty big. And that makes me think that we don't wanna use these gates all the time. I think that's gonna be kind of ridiculous. I think what we wanna do instead is stuff like this, utilize it as sort of a fence, right? So that's definitely something we'll, we'll do here. So overall, feeling pretty good about this. Um, really what we're trying to do here is just get a sense of like how we're gonna do this because exterior levels in, in this way is definitely a pain. It's definitely a pain. And uh, I'm starting to wonder if I don't even wanna do these beveled lips here because they're just such a pain. Um, they're causing so much problems. So instead just have a path that goes up and extrude it down and call it a day, you know? Um, that's probably what I'll do. Cause that's ridiculous. So, I'm, you know, I learned a lot. I learned a lot. What we're probably gonna do, we're probably gonna add this piece here to this fence piece. So you just snap it down and call it a day. Um, as opposed to extruding it up because it just causes so many problems. Um, yeah. So I don't know. All right, let's do a let's do a brainstorming session, guys. Um, this is something I've been looking forward forward to today. We've got 222 viewers, 222 brilliant brains. Um, I was thinking we could come up with some cool ideas together um, for how we make this game. Let me show you the game, okay? So if we go to level two, I'm gonna save this. If we go to level two here. This is the one that we're really focusing on right now. Let's go ahead and place some, um, I'm gonna close out Pro Builder. Let me go ahead and place some enemies. Just wanna show you guys what we've got currently, okay? And I'm gonna need you guys to put on your brainstorming thinking caps and work with me here as we come up with some cool ideas. So we have spiders, we have walkers, Okay. Let's just sprinkle them about just so we can show you guys how the game feels and how it plays. We have some Teletubby type enemies that blow up when you get too close. Okay. We also have walkers with shotguns. You could put one maybe on the ground here. Just so you guys can see what is happening with the game and maybe get an idea of how it plays. And let's go ahead and put some weapons down here. Okay. Pistol here. And why not the axe as well? Okay. Okay. All right, let's hit play. <laughs> okay. So here's the question, guys. I'm going to play through just to give you an idea of what we've got. So we're in, and y'all stick around because I want to hear your ideas. Um, we've got this basically Tower of Terror. It's this massive Tower of Terror. And we enter the ride, okay? You're given a gun. And you're, it's gonna be incredibly violent, right? So it's like this super violent theme park ride, okay? Okay. 
Okay. So hopefully you see kind of what we have to offer here um, for how this game feels. Let's go up here, take a look at our walkers. Okay. So overall, guys, um, this is what we've got currently, okay? Now, the question is, um, by the way, there's this elevator here, okay? And once you beat a level, once you find the ticket to unlock the next floor, it's a little golden ticket, kind of like Willy Wonka. Once you find that ticket, you insert it into the slot, and then you, burp, a, a key appears, and then you can go to the next floor, okay? So that's what we've got. You've got keys, you got door systems, lock systems. Let me show you, we got this system here, right? Allows you to unlock new sections of the hotel. We've also got locked doors here. So this will be a locked door and you have to go and find keys, okay? So the key will be down here. So, the question is, this is the question. In terms of in terms of multiplayer, in terms of live streaming, creating a community, what can we come up with together during this live stream? What can we brainstorm together to make this game more streamable, more community focused, okay? Um, even multiplayer. Throw out your ideas now and let's sort of put them together and come up with something uh, that makes this game a little bit more click, um, a little bit more of a hook, right? We've got the cool hotel. We've got creepy enemies. We've got an elevator that only unlocks after you found the key, right? We've got a cool story, good theme. We're in a crazy theme park ride. There will be characters you could talk to, but what is that community hook, right? What makes this game replayable? What makes it something we can stream on Twitch? Because that's a really, really important thing to consider with your game. And I've been racking my brain trying to figure out what we can do here. Um, Floor 666, that's a cool name. Um, Fortnite skins, yeah. <laughs> hide and seek, hide and seek, but more father. Interesting. Achievements, okay. Multiplayer invasion mode where the invader takes some sort of special enemy. Hmm. What does that mean? What does that mean, invader mode? Is that like Among Us where you have like a, <coughs> a secret character or something? Multiplayer invader mode. Weapon crafting, I thought about that. That's an interesting idea for sure. Um, a way to change your weapon and craft it. That's interesting. Allow chat to select the perks and curses, or even select the guns. That is an interesting interesting thought as well. Map making, okay. Enderman type enemy. Yeah, I, I think that that's probably a requirement for sure. Um, basically some sort of crawling creature. I thought about calling it like um, the lady or something, and she's sort of like crawls along the floor, and if you look her in the eyes, you're dead, and you start it over. I thought about making this roguelike. What do you guys think about that? Basically, it's this like 300, let's just say 100, 100 levels going up on this elevator, right? And if you die, you start over. What do you guys think about that? If you die, you start over. And also I thought, wouldn't it be cool if the, the floors change or, or swap? Um, so that's an idea. Game show, mini games, random level generation, okay. Multiplayer roguelike. So read, that's a great idea. Multiplayer roguelike or co-op roguelike, right? Um, where you like work together. The question is, is it roguelike entirely? So let's, let's focus on this really quick. Hold your ideas. 
if we did roguelike for this game, if we did roguelike, is it roguelike for the campaign itself for single player? Or is it only roguelike for multiplayer? I don't know what the standard is and what's normal. Cause you guys know this about me. I don't play video games. I only play like classic Bioshock style games, <laughs> Half-Life. So I don't really know what's normal. Race to the top two player. That sounds really fun actually. <clears throat> so um, fortune teller, wait, 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 wait. From experience, random level generation, this type of game can go wrong. Yeah, I've, I've definitely heard that. Um, capture the flag, but the flag could be something related to the actual game, maybe a crucifix. I think there should be story elements. Yeah, 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 there's gonna be plenty of story elements. Um, make the hotel move and shift around as you progress up. I totally agree with that, by the way. But um, yeah, so let's see here. Watch God Tower Anime. You are gonna get a lot of inspiration. God Tower Anime. Okay, let's type that, let's write that down. For some reason my gut is telling me you're right about that. God Tower Anime. Um, okay, so, but, but the, oh, this is an interesting idea. For every taken damage, viewer collects coins, which they use for spawning extra mobs. Um, get inspiration from Luis, Luigi's Mansion. I, I agree. I don't think Luigi's Mansion is a streamable community oriented game. And I think that I want this to be community oriented. Um, I, I want it to be like a game show. Um, so I'm trying to figure this, this out. Take Remnant from the Ashes as a reference for blah, blah, blah. Remnant from the Ashes for roguelike elements. Okay, let's write that down. Remnant from the Ashes. Okay. Add spawn points for enemies and randomly spawn different mobs. That's fine, but that's like, that's not necessarily community oriented or makes it streamable. I mean, it, it, it is, it makes it random, you know, and different. Um, I'd say co-op mode where one player has to do certain tasks while the other distracts the Enderman. Interesting, interesting. So one person has like a flashlight or something that can like distract the Enderman and the other person has to, but then doesn't that mean that you're, that's a cool idea. And it's roguelike. That's a really cool idea. That's a really cool idea. Let's write these down, okay guys? Um, Roguelike. I just wondered if it's a ro is it, it's roguelike, um, and because uh, I don't play games, so I don't know what these terms are. Roguelike co-op. Now, can can one of you answer my question? Is co-op can it can it be roguelike single player, or is co-op is single player roguelike a problem? That's the question. Not at all, you should use, okay, no. So, okay, so what you're saying is roguelikes are usually single player, okay. So we can do roguelike, single player, or co-op. Co-op mode requires one player to use a flashlight or something to uh, stop the Enderman, okay. That's it. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Let the player store the damage they are being dealt for some sort of power up. Interesting. Have skulls or curses like Halo to increase difficulty. Um, adding multiplayer will delay your project so much more. Oh yeah. Well, if the game is focused on multiplayer, um, and well, if it's like Dusk, but with like a multiplayer co-op mode that makes it streamable, then you've just increased profitability by like 10%. I'm sorry, 10, 10 times what you would expect because it's now streamable, right? It's, it's fun, and, and it, even if you, do, if you do Twitch integration, even more so, right? Multiplayer will make you lose your hair, Thomas. That's hilarious, you're probably right. I think we need to define terms. Jason's story is here to tell us the truth. Jason, I was thinking about you today. I was like, if I, if I live stream this and brainstorm, I want Jason's story to join 
the story because he always helps. So as Jason said, um, I think we needed to find terms. Roguelike means dungeon crawl, normally through a procedural dungeon, normally role play. Roguelite, see, I needed this. Roguelite means um, that progressive upgrading it means that plus means that plus progressive upgrading to fix difficulty curves. Interesting. Now, does it have does roguelike have to be procedurally generated? That's the next question. Does roguelike have to be procedurally generated? That's the next question. Roguelike single player co-op co-op mode requires one player to use blah blah blah. blah. Okay. No, no. Okay, I see. I agree. Rogue Light is more of a simplified version of the hardcore rogues. That's why I think I want to do Rogue Light. Meaning, you die, it's over, right? So, this is. What do you guys think about this idea? Rate this idea, because you guys know I'm not a gameplay guy. So, I, I, my my thing is story, and this is this is one of my big weaknesses. I thought it might be really fun if there's this elevator, okay. There's an elevator right here. And the only way to get the elevator to move is you have to find the key. And the key is hidden in this wacky, like crazy floor, okay? And so it's this big maze, you find the key, and then you bring it in, you insert the key, and then you can go to the next floor. I thought, how cool would it be if you, there's no saving, right? So it's it's roguelite, if there's no saving and it is like basically almost impossible to get to the top floor. It's that hard. Is that a good idea? <laughs> I wanna know what you guys think. So instead of ideas, just tell me what you think about that. There's no saving. And you gotta get to the top floor. We'll add a, okay, so Nuff Gang says that's going to add a ton of tension if you do it right. Chris says sounds infuriating. Um, personally, I think that increases replayability. Yes, with a leaderboard. That would be a good hardcore mode. Sounds good to me, a lot of replayability. Yeah. Too hard, sounds good. Maybe as like an extra level. Sounds fun. Um, I don't think it can be both because then that removes that removes the reward and the beauty. Like if, if, okay, for example, if there's streamers who are streaming on YouTube and they get to the top of the tower, that's a big deal worldwide, that's a big deal. But if you have this other mode where people can get to the top, I would say, how about this? Okay, here's another idea. Everybody hold your ideas, hold your ideas because I'm not gonna read them. What do you think about this? Let's, it, single player, co-op, it doesn't matter, okay? What, is there a way to give us the best of both two worlds? So have our cake and eat it too. So what about this? You play the first five levels and you get to the top, quote unquote. And then the checkpoints, the checkpoints start to, to dissolve. Eventually they disappear and there's no more checkpoints. So it's like you can you can beat the single player mode, but it gets to a certain point where it's like, okay, the next 20 floors or 30 floors, this is all roguelike or roguelite. So basically the idea is checkpoints eventually disappear. That's the way they did it back in the day, old school. Yeah, you can ha do floors with the enemy environment affixes to create variation, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Focusing, so Merchant says we need to focus on the story rather than the gameplay. What if I told you that the story's all there, we just need a little bit more of a gameplay gimmick? Because we're gonna, we're gonna focus on the story. The story will be there, and that's gonna be easy. Every level should have different weather. I totally agree with Devil. Hmm, kind of dangerous and not be unfair. Maybe checkpoints on, then off, then on again. Hmm. No. So you have to be fast to save your... Ooh, okay. <coughs> Peter, that's an interesting idea. Peter, I'm going to write that down. Peter says, 
what if speed speed wins you checkpoints right so if you beat a level in like five minutes you get a checkpoint reward maybe it's like a coupon or you can purchase checkpoints purchase checkpoints it's an idea but you only get coins from speed so it's like if you're fast the coins will give you a checkpoint that's an interesting idea I don't know if that it needs to be something that you can sell you need to be able to th this is Thomas the marketer talking we need something and in like four words we need to be able to say bang that's what this game is right so get to the top no saves right uh, tower climb roguelike game um, something like that okay the carnival idea to spend rewards that's great purchase checkpoints and I'm gonna write this down you could use your carnival idea as a way to spend rewards so there's like these dispenser systems so you run over here and there's like a dispenser right here and you could choose to spend your 20 coins on a checkpoint and so you're like, oh, do, do I want to get a checkpoint today or not, right? The problem is that's not necessarily, like the whole goal of this, the whole goal of this brainstorming is to find a hook, something that we can latch onto from a marketing perspective that makes this game unique. That makes it streamable, that's awesome. But it doesn't necessarily ensure we have a marketable tagline, right? And that's what we're looking for. Maybe a few floors have checkpoints right after a boss. Jason, where are you? Where's Jason's story? Jason, give us an idea. Okay, okay, this is interesting. Carl has a really good idea. Carl says, how about actual old school codes for levels? So if you beat it, you type in the code and the whole game is so difficult that people wanna work together using the codes. That's an idea, I think, me and Felipe have been talking about that, which is super hard to crack codes that open up new floors, almost impossible without an internet community. But it's not to say that you lock people out in single player mode, but like in like a, if you wanted to like get to phase that the second part of the game or like maybe a adventure plus mode then the inter internet community is almost required so that's another idea okay maybe floors are territories and you have to capture them and have the most floors to win okay i don't know about that you like buying checkpoints that's interesting to you okay Trivia, interesting. Get the song rights to Hotel California. <laughs> what about respawn enemy types? If a player kills them, they respawn. Uh, they, they get checkpoints. If they skip, they won't. Hmm. No, it needs to be, ugh, puzzles are fine. It needs to be something. We're looking for that golden ticket, that little nugget that makes this thing have a hook. We're looking for that hook, that one little thing. We're gonna find it, we're gonna find it. What about spawn points or checkpoints only unlock with killing hard bosses, but you can skip them without having checkpoints? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I'm looking for that, that it's really about marketability, guys. Obviously it's about community and building a community and streamable, making it streamable. But it's also about something, I'm sorry, I'm gonna ban this moron. Um, yeah, there you go. Um, it's, 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 it's a twofold question, is what is marketable? What's that tagline, okay? Uh, Minecraft, obviously. It's, you know, a world made of blocks, everything's destructible. Crafting, right? Um, Fortnite is kind of similar, right? It's like crafting. Build your world as you basically play, play PUBG, right? Um, being creative. 
having creativity in this experience as we're climbing this hotel tower? That's the question. That's the question. Um, it, it's a marketing question, but it's also a, uh, it, it creates community and, and allows the game to be replayable. It adds value to the game. Okay, your checkpoint is an elevator that is moving down floors as time passes. When you reach a higher floor, you can call the elevator up to start the timer again. Wait, 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 wait. let's try that one more time. Your checkpoint is an elevator that is moving down floors as time passes. Mm, I don't know. This game is unbeatable. That actually, Tug Mac, I know that's silly, but that's a really good tagline. The unbeatable game show. The unbeatable game. I was talking to Felipe about this. I was like, how do we make this game basically virtually unbeatable? You know? Because that, that's something that we're really interested in. It's like making this thing just require community support. Um, coins be souls, then be like, how will you spend your soul? Collect blood to open locked doors. What if everyone has like religious role when they start a multi game? Hmm. Interesting. I have one, one major hook idea that I'm not going to share with you guys. Cause I do think it could be the greatest idea ever. Um, but it also could be really stupid. So I'm not going to share it right now. Jason story has a slot machine idea. For streamer potential, a slot machine before each floor that randomizes the elements. Ooh. The odds of what? This is great, Jason. The odds of what? So Jason says, um, a slot machine on each floor that randomizes the elements. Okay. Um, what are the elements? Let's go with, with Jason's ideas here. here. This is interesting. Um, randomizes what elements enemy placement with stream integration for the audience to mess with the odds what does that mean specifically rooms do they do the room swap is this roguelite do we want to do roguelite are we going with roguelite does it move the enemies around does it change the amount of enemies Let's go with this idea really quick, guys. Let's go with this idea really quick and see what we got. You can have Twitch options like Cult of the Lamb. Game, uh, Cult of the Lamb. Actually, Jay, Jay, the creator of Cult of the Lamb, is why I'm doing this right now. I talked with Jay, and he was very, very generous with his time. And he said, Thomas, we gotta, you got to find a hook for this thing. Because you, know, you can have a cool story. You can have first-person elements. You can have beautiful graphics, but we got to, we got to find this hook. Um, I like the idea of gambling. Like you gamble, you gamble. Gambling is like the core. It's like the core of the game. And like to get to the top of the tower faster, you have to gamble. I like this slot machine idea. This is cool. Jason, this is cool. Slot machine idea. Um, Jason said, so hook number one, make it to the top of the tower. The streamer becomes the tower. Okay, Jason, we already came up with that idea. Don't say it out loud. Freaking stealing my ideas, man. But I, I think that's great, dude. Now, is this a one-time thing, Jason, or is this a worldwide thing? Jason says, make it to the top of the tower. That streamer becomes the tower owner. Everyone else fights them as a boss. The odds roll help hurt perks to help their streamer get to the top and be king. Hmm. Make it to the top of the tower. The streamer becomes the tower owner. Everyone else fights them as a boss. <clears throat> I, like, I like the idea of, the idea of this saving, like on a server. What I mean is like, you get to the top of the tower, you own that tower, like across the world. Anyone who plays the game, you name the tower. You're, I, I, I even said, you email the person who's like the top leader of the quarter 
and you get them to do voice acting and their voice comes through the loudspeaker of the tower. So it's like the, the hook is something like get to the top of the tower, own the game. Like you are the owner of the game. Um, the, the, there's this idea I have, which is like, it's roguelite, it's brutal. The rooms shuffle and change depending on the time of day, okay? So like, I think this is a great idea actually. I think I've found it. Um, what if the tower is real? Like, what if it's real? So it's linked to the season. It's linked to the time of day, kind of like Destiny. Um, is it the way Destiny is? It's, or, or, uh, and also um, Animal Crossing. It's linked to the time of day. And the person who gets to the top of the tower is the owner of the tower. Like they own this thing and they get to like rename the tower. And um, when you play the game, their name is like boom on the tower. As you walk up to the tower, it's like Jason's story tower, right? And then Jason's story's voice is coming through the loudspeakers and he's like, hey, you moron, uh, you can't beat me. You can't, you can't win. I beat this thing in five minutes. So you can become the owner of the tower. You can have streamers like Jack Septicai become the owner of the tower. Um, what do you think about that? I want to get your ide ideas, guys. Do you think that's a good idea? That's a good idea. Okay. Gambling has negative vibes, okay? What if you mix Jason's idea, the owning one, with the floors being territories? Interesting, interesting. Turn it into a strategy game. <clears throat> I don't know, I like the idea of it being singular and, 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 and simple. You should have many winners that gamble play against each other to win for the week, okay? Even not, even not odd says that's a good idea, okay? How about, how about doing cheat codes that if you s solve some, that's gonna increase the marketing of the game? Okay. Mm, that's, I mean, I, I, love, I love the idea of chests um, that have secret stuff in there that you can like get just for you. Um, or like, for example, it's kind of like NFTs, but basically you have Let's say there's a portrait and you solve the, the, the riddle and then there's like a riddle or a code you have to type in on the portrait and then it'll change and it'll put your name on it or something. So, and then it stays that way for everybody. So if you open up the game, it's gonna show that. It's gonna have your name or your portrait or something, something about you in the tower. So I like the idea of being able to shape and change the tower based on who's winning, um, basically taking ownership of the tower. It's just an interesting idea. Um, good idea, but when you go offline, you don't own it anymore. That, that way there is always someone talking and bugging players as a game master. <coughs> hmm. When you become the king, you put obstacles in for other players. That's interesting. So you sort of become the... Uh, the uh, like a level editor. Yeah, it's King of the Hill. It's like a global King of the Hill game. Um, the problem is if somebody like rigs it and they can beat it in 10 seconds, it's like screwed, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's totally true. Anno Gamo says, "I hope you have a good anti-cheat system." I know, right? Um, I always liked in Mario Battle Royale you could sabotage other players. This is from Jason's story. Uh, you could spend points to make it harder for others, drop enemies behind you. Yeah, the way that I see this kind of multiplayer system is not that. It's not that you have four four players playing the, the game together. It's that it's kinda like Dark Souls, 
where it's like you're playing the level and then you see like random stuff appears from other players. Do you know what I'm saying? Jason, do you, do you understand what I'm saying there? So it's kind of like um, sometimes doors are locked because a player paid for it to be locked with their coins. And then it's locked when you get to it and it has the person's name over it or something. It doesn't have, this is from Josuku. Josuk. It doesn't have to be multiplayer though. It could be uh, asynchronous, meaning that what people do in their game, yeah, that's what I was saying, influences other people's games, but they don't actually play in the same lobby. Totally agree with that. And that's, that's what I, that's the kind of game I prefer to play. I don't actually like playing with other people. I think co-op is fine, um, but just to have someone with you. But I think I think having elements of the hotel change randomly based on the community, that's pretty cool. Now, I have this idea. There's another idea. Let me ask you guys' opinion on this, okay? Let's move on to the next one. It's two player. One player is a contestant the other is the hotel okay so basically the way i see this is you have um one player with a gun and he's going around shooting enemies and trying to make it up the tower and then you have another player that can sort of glide around the hotel and go through walls and place traps and booby traps and and trigger doors to shut and slam and spikes to appear so you're playing as the hotel so that's the hook play you could play as the hotel um something like that i don't know hey we got another we got another beautiful bot so that's that's another idea is like basically you have like this god's eye view and you are the hotel so it's kind of like if you are the ghosts in the hotel, something like that. Um, that's another idea I had. One player, yeah, it's like a board game. One player is the master of, or the dungeon keeper. That's interesting. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Something like that. Um, yeah. The trial-based mode would work for player versus hotel. Okay, player versus hotel, that's interesting. Player versus hotel. Maybe you just meet other players like in Journey. Hmm, that's a cool idea. I like, you know, the hook that I'm seeing is it's a real hotel, you know? Like it's a real game show. Real hotel. Let me write that down. It's a real game show. It's a real ride. Um, meet other players like in Journey. So they don't really have any crucial impact in the game. You just meet these contestants that are running around too. Um, that's interesting. Piotr says, I think it went too far. Just make an unbeatable game using massive amounts of random perks which help or distract. I know. I agree. That's a great idea. Five to 20 players al allowed at the same time online. Everyone has their own class skill. <laughs> what levels will be good at, blah, 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 and one game master that changes the hotel. That sounds fun, honestly. You have 10 players. 10 contestants, one hotel. It's interesting. Interesting ideas, guys. What if you have a telephone that you can use to contact other players? Ooh, oh, that's cool. A single telephone to contact other players. For clues, right, getting clues. A saw style game yeah that's that's kind of what we're going for too yeah. 
You have your own hotel room? Yeah, I thought about that yesterday. What if you have your own hotel room? Okay. You can invite people over. The problem is a lot of hooks are really different flavors of the same game loop. How does an idea substantially change the minute to minute gameplay? Otherwise it gets stale. Yeah. Okie dokie. <laughs> yeah, I'm just reading them here, guys. Reading your ideas. Yeah, you know, I, I think that... Um, this is what I think. I think having a game that you get to the top of a hotel tower and that person owns the tower, it's pretty sweet, right? I think it's pretty awesome. It changes the text of the tower to the name of the person. Um, and it changes, the, it puts their name all over the game and they can influence just the appearance of the tower and you can own the tower. I think that's pretty cool. Um, but all in all, you know, it's just doom, you know, it's like, let's collect keys and go up the tower and it gets really, really hard. Um, I think that's having it roguelike. I really like that idea. I really like that idea. Um, keeping it simple is, I think I, overall, I, I'm, I'm totally agreeing with a lot of you, which is like, we need to just keep this simple. Um, so it's like, what if, what if, uh, what if a game like, um, Quake, um, or, uh, what am I saying? Yeah. What if a game like Doom or Quake or Half-Life was roguelike and, uh, yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> Have I played Control? I'll write that down. Play Control. Hmm. <laughs> Carl, Carl says everyone has to meet for breakfast and evening entertainment, like at a cruise. That's funny. Yeah, Josuku's right. Multiplayer makes things way more complicated. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I've heard about Deathloop. Deathloop is another one. Um, I actually, I was told that today. A friend of mine said, you need to look at Deathloop. Yeah, Among Us is obviously another one. Um, just a, you know, that's the thing is I, I, I personally wouldn't want to be excluded, you know, where it's like, because I just want to play single player games. I don't really like multiplayer games. So it, they don't really fascinate me. Um, so I don't want to exclude people. I want to keep the game playable in single player. Um, I just want to consider any community elements we can add here to make the game a little bit more streamable. I'm telling you, ghost players it the key, haha. You can see the ghost of the player from the previous run and have to better them or dodge their ghost, like Mario Kart. I have thought, that's a really good idea. I love the idea of it being a race. So it's like, and that's that's owning the tower, right? Is it's, it's a race. It's like, how do you get to the top? And you know, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that, I guess, let's let's consider, consider this owning the hotel thing. You know, that's, 
this this is a problem because it's like if if someone's just really really good then no one wants to try anymore right but if everyone can own their own floor and then there's one person who owns the hotel that might be worth it where you've got like 20 tiers and each person gets a plaque on that floor um, the username that's kind of cool right um, midnight ghost hunt what's that midnight ghost hunt I also love hide-and-seek I freaking love hide-and-seek I thought about that hide-and-seek in a massive hotel I'm not sure how how that works but make the boss the owner character to be based on the latest player who beat the game yeah that'd be cool if like uh when you when you get to the top and you've won or like ooh, here's a here's a hook um players uh the best players become the bosses so what that means is like you have 20 levels and the players who are the fastest to get to that level they get to customize the boss and it changes it changes the way the boss looks it's purely it's purely visual so the name of the boss the way they look the way their face looks is changed based on who beat that who 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 was the fastest right so that's that's interesting purely visual Yeah. So as you can see, guys, it's not like we're changing anything about the actual game. It's still the same. It's just you you incorporate these community elements that make the game a little bit more interesting to stream, right? Every Steam account has a room that can be customized and then added to the almost infinite tower. Yeah. See, that's what's funny, Lots. Lots XS is you would get some really funny looking bosses. Yasin says, Thomas, why should it be streamable? Because when you invest half a million dollars in making a game minimum, you definitely want to make sure that it's profitable and, and marketable on its own. And that's why streamability is so freaking important because it makes the game marketable on its own. And if you don't have that, it's a big gamble. It's a big gamble these days. Super Mario Maker style floors would be so cool. Interesting. Make it Splatoon, but with the blood of enemies. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we've, we've written that down. That's a good idea. But we have that written down. Change the look of the tower. Yeah. With just badges and stuff. It's purely visual. Yeah. Um, cool. Wait, 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 wait. Doom meets Overcooked. Some Jason story. You have to actually be a hotel porter at the same time. Clean floors, checking bags. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Be a be a bellboy while shooting enemies. So like you you <laughs> the enemies you're killing are like splattering blood everywhere, and you have to clean it up before you can move on to the next floor. I need to take a look at Overcooked. I haven't played Overcooked. That's hilarious. Overkilled. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's funny. Cool ideas, guys. Yeah. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. But you know, at the end of the day, guys, at the end of the day, we're gonna have a great single player mode, right? A great single player mode with really cool enemies, great music, a lot of fun. Um, we just need that community hook. We need a community hook. And I think a, a game like this really warrants it, especially when you've got this cool elevator, central elevator that you're always going up to the next floor, to the next floor, to the next floor. I think that's great. I think that's great. Um, so don't over don't underestimate the value of having a community element to your game. I think it's really really important. It's worth the effort to put it in there. Just because you're making a Doom style game doesn't mean you don't include community elements, okay? So that's what we're going to do here. Um There we there we go. There we there we there we there we there we there we, there we go. Good good good. Good good good. Well, guys, that was fun. Just remember that there are probably one, there's probably one code left to get 50% off full-time game dev, which is my massive program that teaches you everything I've learned in the last 15 years of starting my own game studio and making a profitable one at that. You're also gonna learn 2D Art Pro, which is totally free for this deal. And this ends this week, guys. So all these courses, this sale event ends this week, okay? You're also gonna get a free T-shirt, which I'm wearing right now. And hey, you're gonna learn how to secure six figures in funding for publishers. You're gonna learn how to hit the Steam front page. Learn C Sharp, Unity, Kickstarter. Tons of 2D art tutorials. And again, free t-shirt. I'll also shout you out in tomorrow's stream. And I will see you guys around. This was so helpful. Thank you so much for supporting guys, supporting the channel and just offering up your ideas. I think this was so super duper fun. You know, we may not do anything here, but uh, it's definitely good to brainstorm and get some ideas out there, okay? Love you guys very much. This was super duper fun. I will see you later. Cheers. Get over here. Get down. <coughs> hey, thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below, it's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days and actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which was really cool. This game kit is totally free. It's my treat to you and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit. I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me. Hit subscribe. And also, this is important. Hit that notification bell. Here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game and let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have. And you might just show up, your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right, I'll talk to you later, bye. I love you too.